All right, guys, I'm back again, uh, which is wild because this is like literally three seconds after I did that last video on New Mutants number 94. Uh, but I am going to do Savage Dragon uh, with his third rockin' issue here because it's Eric Larson and everything he does is rockin' and it's just the way it is. Um, I would like to point out something that I never saw before. Um, I just noticed as I was speaking about this and I'm looking at this cover. Uh, I know that I've heard stories of the colorists and everything. You know, they're just learning how to do um, digital coloring and everything. And they're using everything that they have in Photoshop in order to do that. So that's why we're getting this uh, this weird kind of uh, texture here on bedrock in order to get, you know, what looks like a rock. But check out what they did with these bricks over here. I'm going to try to close in. So you can see here the, the texture they used on these bricks. Uh, I had never noticed that before. And um, that's kind of blowing my mind right now uh, because I've seen that texture in Photoshop. I just never knew. I'm kind of glad they got away from that. Um, but here we go. So uh, Savage Dragon number three. Uh, we still have Gregory Wright as a colorist, which makes me very happy. And in the same, you know, tradition of uh, all Eric Larson comics here, we start off with a just an awesome splash page with this guy Inferno uh, jumping through a window, I guess, because we see the shattered glass and everything. Uh, the lettering by Chris Iliopoulos um, is again it, that's a staple of Dragon. If you if you don't have that, it doesn't look the same. It's not the same uh, you know book or whatever. Um, I do want to uh, do this special thanks this month. Go to Rob Liefeld for the use of Bedrock and Youngblood and to Spawns. Moo Crew, McFarlane, Olaf, and Orzakowski, for whom we blatantly homage the Spawn TV bit. Okay, so that was, I guess, in the, or maybe it's in this issue, where we're going to see Spawn looking at a TV or whatever, uh, and it's drawn with, like, the same artwork and all of that. So I thought that was a plan between Larson and McFarlane to do that on purpose, but uh, we'll see that, and I guess it wasn't. Uh, but here we go. So our now our, our cool double splash page here. Uh, with just insanely awesome colors. Uh, apparently, Dragon's in the hospital again. Um, Inferno comes bursting in saying, die, die, die. Uh, Alex Wilde comes bursting in like, oh, no, not again, you know. And then awesome lettering here. Uh, but Dragon's just like, fuck you, and just puts his head straight through a wall. It is a, an inc incredibly quick fight, and it's hilarious. It was literally just put there so that you can have the splash page introduction and then the double splash page uh on the next right and then that's it it's over it's done okay um so then you know frank darling comes in and says i see you're up and about and he and dragon's just like yeah here's here's your guy uh and alex is like uh so this is another one of the uh vicious circle goons um and uh they're basically just talking about that they're, they're talking about like you know what happened with him last issue where he got cut by Hellraiser and the amount of blood that he lost and everything. And, um, you know, he's, uh, it's Frank Darling telling him that. And he's like, your metabolism is incredible because, you know, the gashes on your head healed in a day. So like you're, you know, they're establishing Savage Dragon's healing factor and everything. And, um, and then she also, you know, brings out what happened uh, with Super Patriot, like letting him know that um, he ended up like, uh, walking away and that he didn't even look conscious when it happened, right? Um, so, Frank Darling, again, is reiterating how great it is to Savage Dragon is on the police force and how they would not be able to stop these uh, freaks, as it were, uh, from doing what they were doing, many crimes, if he was not on the uh, force. And then we see Alex here getting a little angry uh, because he ended up getting hurt and scaring the hell out of her. And, you know, Dragon just hits us with, uh, I never knew you cared. Uh, so now we cut back to the head of the Vicious Circle, uh, which is at the top of the tallest and thinnest skyscraper. I would, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a person who is not a fan of heights. Looking at this building is giving me anxiety. Um, I remember when I was in, I, I went to New York once with my wife and, uh, she wanted to go to the top of the Empire State Building, and I started getting anxiety on the elevator, knowing how high up I was going. 
uh, just in my imagination. Like I didn't even like go out to a window yet or anything like that. And that drove me insane. There's no way in hell I would ever be in this building. I would never go past like the 20th floor or whatever. This, this is fucking insane. I would never touch it. Anyway, um, Overlord is, uh, they're just talking about what took place with, uh, with Super Patriot, Cyber Force, um, how Cyber Data failed to give him the things that he needed or whatever in order to, you know, take over his city and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, of course, he's doing his villain monologue here that nobody or that everybody will suffer the wrath of Overlord. Um, so now we have uh, Savage Dragon apparently uh, getting dressed. I'm guessing this is still in. Yeah, it's in the hospital because we see Nurse Ann Stevens here. Uh, but we have um, Amanda. Uh, I believe her name is. I can't remember her last name, but she comes in. This is the redhead that was being held by one of the Nazi terrorists in the second issue that was taken out by Star when he came in through the window. And she came, oh, it's Amanda Mills. Her name is right there. Um, she uh, came to thank the Savage Dragon in the best way that, you know, she knows how. And that's by using her attributes. Uh, and Dragon is like, you know, you're not really attracted to me. It was just that I, you know, I saved your life and it wasn't even really me who saved your life and blah, blah, blah. But he's still kind of flirting. And that's when, uh, Ann Stevens comes in and she's like, Whoa, Hey, am I interrupting something here? And, um, and Dragon's like, no, no, no. She was just leaving. And Amanda Mills is like, uh, I was, and he's like, yeah, yeah. You could repay me some other time or whatever. So she walks out and, um, you know, this is just an Ann and Dragon thing. And Ann's letting Dragon know that, you know, she was very scared because he came close to death, or at least that's what they thought because they didn't know his healing factor and his healing capability or anything like that. So um, she's just letting him know how hard it was to see him sitting there uh, lifeless and helpless and everything in the bed. And um, that she's so glad that he's still alive and out there fighting, you know, the good fight or whatever. Um, Dragon comes out and does a, uh, a press conference, as it were, let everybody know that he's still around and he's going to be working harder than ever to take down the vicious circle. Um, I remember uh, when I got this book. So the digital coloring here is a much more effect than it was in the first two issues. Even though we still have Greg Wright here, you can see there's a lot more um, with shading and everything that's going on. Because I remember falling in love with this. I just thought this was one of the coolest pictures here. And I don't know, it's the coloring and, you know, just the way the dragon is standing there and everything. I just, I thought it was awesome, okay? Um, but Dragon's like, okay, now if you'll pardon me because you guys are, uh, really bothering me with these, uh, questions and it sounds like, you know, you are, um, accusing me of all this other stuff or whatever. So he runs away and then this other reporter comes out and she's like, hey, can I ask you a few questions? And he's like, no, get out of here or whatever. And she's like, please. And, uh, you know, honestly, it, it works. I can see this and, you know, she's being nice and everything. She says, please. And then Dragon's like all right, maybe I can do that, you know? Um, and then we have Bedrock come in um, and just clock Savage Dragon, okay? And this woman's just like, holy shit, what is going on here, right? Um, so again, we are getting this digital coloring here. As you can see, they're trying to portray stone. This wasn't the best, uh, but it's not as bad as whatever texture they had used on the front cover that I thought was very weird. Um, but uh, Bedrock is going on about how he's seen this guy on TV and that he's not so tough or whatever. And uh, he's like, why don't you get up and let me know what you're made of? And Dragon's like, all right, let me demonstrate here by, you know, hitting you in the stomach and then hitting you in the dick. Because uh, that was obviously a dick punch that throws Bedrock over here. And then Bedrock's like, that was my dick, you asshole, and jumps out to fight Savage Dragon, you know. Uh, so they're fighting, and you can see here, they fall through the wall of a building, almost killing uh, this person here, this employee, bash into an elevator, fall down an elevator shaft. Um, here we go for our copy of Image Comics number zero, which uh, I got to tell you, I think I ignored this completely when I was reading these books. I got all of these books. I had them all. Um so I definitely could have gotten Image Comics Summer Zero, and I know I've seen videos of that, uh, but it was never a thing that interested me for some reason. I don't know. 
And I believe uh, it was the book where Liefeld had done something with uh, cyber something. There was some cyber dude or something like that wearing a trench coat. I don't know. So, um, and I think the only other thing you got was Eric Larson for Dragon Head, uh, where his, um, the girlfriend in the apartment ended up getting shot by her ex-boyfriend. Uh, and then I think somebody did something else, like Mark Silvestri did something else in there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I never sent that off. And then we get this insanely cool, insanely colored, uh, Savage Dragon double page spread here that I love so much, uh, all of this is awesome. Um, the artwork, the coloring, I'm all for it. Loved it. I loved uh, the posters that they would put in these books. Um, and then here, as they're falling down the elevator shaft, is where we get to the spawn page that I was talking about. So I believe that this was in spawn number four at the time, um, where spawn was walking down the street and turned over to our, you know, the, he thinks that these kids... Um, were talking about him, uh, but in fact, they were talking about the Savage Dragon on the TV, and then uh, Spawn is like, good, because I, I don't want the attention, I don't want the fame or anything like that. Uh, cut back to Savage Dragon and Bedrock still fighting on top of an elevator, when Bedrock throws him through an elevator door again, into a wall where he lands, kicks off, or flips, and then kicks Bedrock into the same wall. I did love these animations. We saw one in the second issue where he had flipped over Hellraiser, uh, and I thought it was insanely cool. And we got the same thing here, doing that to Bedrock, where he kicks him straight through the wall and into the uh, ocean, I'm assuming. Um, or no, it's Chicago's own lake. Uh, well, he's like, I'm hoping this guy can swim. And then you can see that he gets a little concerned. He's like, well, I can't just let him die. So he dives down into the water. And there's Bedrock there, still raring to go, and punches... Uh, dragon who punches him back um and then he punches bedrock out of the water jumps out of the water to go fight bedrock some more so again we have like a bunch of insane action here and i'm loving it i'm loving the uh change of locations and everything and we cut to this old lady here who's seen savage dragon on uh, the same news program i'm assuming that spawn just saw and then we can see this picture here of uh somebody who's most likely related to her and then she's just like, Rodney, you're alive. And there's another clue as to what we're getting for uh, Savage Dragon's origin, which I love. Because, again, I, I pointed out that I, I love the idea of the lead character, like, not knowing who he is so we can relate to him. Because we don't know who he is either. And we're following him on that journey to find out, like, you know, his origin and everything. It's a good concept. I like it. It always sucks me in. And here, you know, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't wait to find out who the hell the Savage Dragon is. Uh, but here they're still fighting. And then uh, Bedrock, the whole time he's being punched, he's like, all right, all right, all right. I called, you know, calling it off. Uh, come on, knock it off, okay? Take it easy, take it easy. I just wanted to see if you were tough enough to join Youngblood, jeez, right? And then Dragon's like, are you fucking serious, pal, right? And the biggest punch ever. Like he was holding back throughout the rest of the fight. But here he's like, I literally want to knock the soul out of you, okay? I want to one of Dr. Strange you right here. And um, he gets over Bedrock and he's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And, um, you know, he's like, do you know how many, uh, how much damage you caused uh, with, with the stupid fight and everything? And Bedrock's like, well, damn, I'm sorry. Can I go? And he's like, no, hell no, you're under arrest. So then he comes uh, home to his apartment where he finds Debbie sitting in front of his apartment uh, where she's been, you know, locked out or whatever. Uh, I'm thinking it's his apartment. Maybe it's her apartment. And he was just walking down the hall and saw that, but she's saying that her mom locked her out. And he's like, well, you know, come on, you can stay in my place and we'll talk to your mom tomorrow. And she's like, okay, so then they go in. Um, and again, that's where I think it's gonna pick up with image number zero, where they spent the night together, obviously had sex. Uh, and the next morning she answers Savage Dragon's door when somebody knocks and gets her brains blown out. Um, here we have young blood showing up to uh, get Bedrock out of jail and letting him know that the money for all the damages were coming out of his paycheck uh, and that what he did was incredibly stupid. So then Frank gets a phone call in the middle of the night and the phone call is from Skullface here letting him know uh, that they know what happened with his cousin Fred's warehouse and that he was responsible for it and that you know they'll be calling him uh, 
so that he can fix things for them when they need it. So he's being blackmailed, okay? And um, yeah, so there we go, just see that. And then that was uh, the end of Savage Dragon number three, right? Uh, that was it. Um, here we have the uh, art by Jeffrey Scott, which is J. Scott Campbell. Um, pretty decent Savage Dragon here, loved it. So that was it. So that was the Savage Dragon miniseries uh, that we got from Eric Larson uh, that I was in love with. And then I was just like, bring it on, let's do the uh, the monthly thing because I could read this forever. And I honestly have been. Um, I do the collected editions because again, I, you know, fell behind on getting the other stuff. Uh, but I have, I'm still reading it. Every time an archives issue comes out, I buy it and uh, I'm fully invested. So um, guys, I wanna thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit like. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe. All right guys, I'll see you.